Let's talk about the goings-on within the Republican Party because I've also been mentioning lately a lot about the civil war that's been happening between both parties. Well, in amidst both parties, rather. Not like a big overarching civil war like some other hacks have been peddling. I think I probably mentioned it once, but um, yeah, it, the likelihood of there being a hot civil war in the United States is, I, I think it's like next to nothing, really. Unless things escalate much greater than the current trajectory, I don't think we're going to have to worry about bullets flying through the air, to be completely honest. But there is a dissent that's happening within both major parties. I think everybody can plainly see that. I just think that the Democrats are just kind of getting along with the most radical fringes at this point. They're trying to excise the demons like so many people thought that they might and are instead just wearing the progressives, the squad's ideas, just like a really creepy skin suit, and that would kind of account for Joe Biden's plasticine smile. But that's another story for another day, and we've you know, ragged on Democrats and their really awful positions long enough, so let's take a look at what's going on within the Republican Party, and perhaps the most based GOP in the entire country, with the possible exception of Texas, because what they've done, and we'll probably get to that in the next video, and that's not so much the GOP is just a Republican Attorney General, but the same guy who authored that wonderful, wonderful bill that, or what, not a bill, but the lawsuit against Pennsylvania that would have avoided a bunch of shit happening if it would have just, you know, made it in front of some justices, but no use crying over spilt milk. Let's take a look at the Arizona GOP to vote on resolution to censure Cindy McCain, Jeff Flake, and Governor Doug Ducey. I love it. <laughs> I love it. If the left is going to go ahead and weaponize censorship, you might as well just let the right go ahead and cordon off the people that they no longer want in their party and tell them to go fuck their mother. Or if you're like that fine lady in the middle of the screen, get told something worse by her husband. That right there is whatever is left of Cindy McCain. And I can't be any more rude than her actual husband was because, of course, I made reference to it before and we're going to make reference to it again in a new book by Cliff Sheff. Cliff Schechter has an inside scoop on John McCain, and if you want to know why John was called McNasty in high school, that's funny in and of itself. Gotta read this little excerpt. At one point, Sydney or Cindy playfully twirled Mc John McCain's hair and said, you're getting a little thin up there. John McCain's face reddened, and he responded, very measured, and uh, definitely not somebody who has it all together would respond. At least I don't plaster on the makeup like a trollop, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if John McCain didn't kill more kids than Planned Parenthood, I would almost give him a little bit of credit for that because I've thought those words and said them to so many different people. But for you to have the balls to do that to your own wife is both hilarious and not necessarily becoming of somebody who would go on to question the moral efficacy of their own internal political adversaries for decades to come. But that's why it's barely reported that in his collusion with the North Vietnamese and Russia and Ukraine. And his final vote in the Senate was to uphold Obamacare, which he vowed to get rid of on several different occasions. He's not a man of great standing, in my opinion. But his widow, his surrogate, and I don't know what affiliation Doug Ducey had with him, but um, he's really carried on his legacy and the GOP are voting to get rid of them out of the party because Cindy McCain endorsed and voted for Biden. Jeff Flake was too busy crying to cast his ballot and Doug Ducey did Doug Ducey things throughout the entire investigation into the election. So fair play, fair play, GOP. The Arizona Republican Party will vote on resolutions to censure Cindy McCain, former Senator Jeff Flake, and Governor Doug Ducey, a Republican, when it meets on January 23rd. McCain, the widow of the late Senator John McCain, endorsed President-elect Joe Biden over Donald Trump in the 2020 election. I wonder why. On Tuesday, Arizona Central reported in the text in the draft resolution to censure and dissolve any connections between the Republican Party and McCain. Oh, you know what? She really could have avoided this if um, she would have left the garden trowel in her makeup bag for a day or just not popped a dud out of her crotch. Nothing's worse than Meghan McCain. But here's the draft resolution. Whereas Cindy Hensley McCain, sexy middle name, the wife of late Sen Arizona Senator John McCain, has supported leftist causes such as gay marriage. I think that's not really a leftist cause anymore. I'm pretty sure a vast majority of Republicans, not even like new school 
Trump populist Republicans, but just everybody kind of, you know, doesn't really care about it anymore. It's kind of like weed with Republicans. And I have a position on it, but at the end of the day, it's like way down here when it comes to things I care about. So growth of the administrative state, that is definitely something she's all about. And others to run counter to Republican values, a Republican form of government, and the United States Constitution. <laughs> Big 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 claims right there but she said it all in the press so it's really kind of hard to refute whereas sydney cindy mccain i don't know why i want to say sydney has failed to support conservative republican candidates such as president trump if you can disassociate yourself from the man donald trump and the politician president trump the way that he's governed has been remarkably conservative not since first term reagan probably has there been such a conservative president whereas cindy mccain has supported globalist policies and candidates including democrats such as joe biden i think that's irrefutable in direct opposition to republican values the interests of the american people and the constitution of the united states whereas cindy mccain has condemned president trump for her criticism of her husband and erroneously placed behaviors over actual presidential results oh wow wow i would love to make that claim just against oh uh i don't know mainstream media in general how about that one? Fox News, you can start there. On Tuesday, Republican National Committee Chair Ronna McDaniel, yuck, issued a statement opposing the censure resolution of McCain. Of course she did, because as you can see here, Ronna McDaniel is the niece of one gay porn star stunt double, Mittens Romney, who I'm sure is still crying nightly into his pillow. Not for, you know, like the backside pain, but because his fallen hero he probably prays to his McCain and Poppy Bush figurines before bed every night and puts on his magic underwear obviously we we're upset that prominent republicans would support joe biden whose beliefs are the opposite of what our party stands for but the language in this resolution is abhorrent well stating the truth sometimes is a little tough to handle i understand that but let's be fair none of that stuff up there except for you know the leftist causes such as gay marriage the rest of that stuff like 95 percent of what is said there is factually true and provably true. My hope is that the Arizona Republican Party will not entertain it. Oh, you don't know the Arizona Republican Party because the party itself, outside the governor, is quite populist, okay? And the good people in Arizona hated John McCain until his dying days. Remember, when that gold star tumor finally took him to the big army barracks in the sky, he had like a sub 30% approval rating. He had the likability of crib death. My hope is that the Republican Party will not entertain it and does nothing to grow our party or put us in a better position to win 2022. And that is exactly the type of defeatist attitude that cannot be allowed to fester within the Republican Party. If the Republicans hope to succeed in 2022, they would do well to understand that the previous election was an anomaly for various different unspoken reasons not because i don't want to discuss them and not like i haven't discussed them in the past but because youtube is telling me that i have to and that you take a look at the success that you had in the house that was completely and 100 percent unexpected and how about just citing the 300,000 people who didn't vote in georgia in the senate runoffs because the gop wouldn't back president trump that was the difference okay i think the final vote totals are in or maybe they're adjusting them who knows it was within thousands of votes those two rhinos could have steamrolled, absolutely steamrolled that dork and wife puncher if Raffsenberger wasn't such a cuck and, le and leak that audio to the media in order to make him look good and for them to smear Trump with it. Remember, you kind of realize how that just kind of went out into the ether. Even though it was cited in the articles of impeachment, it wasn't really brought up at all. So remember, that was the hottest topic, what, two or three weeks ago at this point? I don't even remember, but I remember how hot that was. Just goes to show you how very little actually sticks to Trump in the long term. So that's why I'm totally thinking that by 2024, he's going to be looking sterling. As long as we get some of those state election reforms passed through. But yeah, let's get back to this. 12 News subsequently reported that the language of the draft censure resolution has been modified. McDaniel was reacting to the initial draft of Cindy McCain resolution. That included inflammatory language about both Cindy McCain and, his, and her late husband, yeah, John McCain, whatever. That language was removed from a resolution and will go to a vote in two weeks. Cool. It's still in there. Whatever. The chairman of their party... The Republican Party national understand, oh, nationally understands that the chairwoman of the Republican Party locally is a complete goofball. 
<laughs> like he means that as a slander, but if you just take a look, that's one Twitter feed that I would actually recommend. If you just want some laughs and you just want to see some shit posting by a verified account that doesn't make you want to hurl, that's one place to start. Said Grant Woods, a former attorney general and a longtime McCain fr family friend. They probably have pictures on him doing something compromising rubbing his dick against a cactus. Senator McCain was censured by the party in 2014. Oh, okay, so it's nothing new for the family. He went on to win re-election two years later, defeating current party chairwoman Kelly Ward in the GOP primary. Of course, because he owned the state, and after he died, everybody see quietly celebrated until Meghan McCain rolled out of the way so that the sun could come out. I'm not surprised by the continuous insults and personal attacks of the GOP. Oh, from Arizona GOP chairman. Chairman? <laughs> Excuse me, we don't use gendered language around here. Chairwoman, Kelly Ward. She's shown how attacking Republicans like me, ugh, Republicans like me, losers, professional losers, can impact elections. Yeah, impacts them even deeper when you don't bother following subpoenas. Her involvement in both Senate elections to replace Jeff Flake and my husband John McCain, two regular targets of her personal attacks, resulted in Democrat wins. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, there's lots of videos out there. I will let that one lie. Lots of people have done good coverage on the 2018 election of Kirsten Cinema, and we all seen in real time Martha McSally tuck her tail between her legs and fucking run out of the state and not say a goddamn word about that election. That one makes me pissed off. Ward is a former state legislator who ran unsuccessfully, yes, for the United States Senate in Arizona and a strong supporter of President Trump. Yes, she is. On Wednesday, the Wall Street Journal said resolutions addressing Flake and Ducey will also be considered at January 23rd meeting in the Arizona Republican Party. Woohoo! Listen, Doug Ducey is in his second term and his time is up. He signed onto the certification after he said that he'd wait for all of the lawsuits to go through for the election and uh, broke his word on that one. So nobody trusts him anymore in Arizona. So he really has no future. He'd just have to pull a Mitt Romney and carpet bag to a different state, become a senator if he wants to have a political future, because there is no way forward if he wants to have any presidential aspirations after the shit that he just pulled. And Jeff Flake, fuck off. He's as threatening as his last name implies. But this isn't the whole of the look into what's happening with the Republican Party, because we got to go up to the federal level. We got to go up to the House level. Because this was just kind of breaking last night as I was recording the Parler versus Amazon response to the responses response. Blech. And there's nothing new on that one. So if you guys are wondering, and I really hope Parler comes back online because, like I said, it's also been reported that they don't know if it's coming back online. But then at the same time, the rest of that interview also went on to say that, yeah, it might take days or weeks, but we'll probably be back online. So that's just a quick sidebar. But up in the house, we're seeing a political tit for tat. That could be a John McCainian choice of words that'll come back to haunt me, but Marjorie Taylor Greene says that she will file articles of impeachment against Biden. I don't know. I'm kind of torn by this one, okay? Let me present my case while I'm thinking both sides of the fence right now, but I'm starting to lean towards one because it's about time that the Republicans engage in using the same tactics. At one side, both of those impeachments against Trump were totally unconstitutional. He did nothing to warrant being impeached, and it'll die a death in the Senate like the first one did, unless they're feeling exceptionally spiteful. We went through the resolution that passed through the House, thoroughly debunked it. There was nothing there. And in the first one, the Senate found nothing there. So the Democrats over the past two years just weaponized the Constitution, something that had only been used twice before in history. Once against Bill Clinton and once against Andrew Johnson. Ironically, both Democrats, but for vastly different reasons. No, I don't like to see the Constitution get weaponized. I would not like it to be used as a weapon, but as we're seeing the mounting evidence that the Democrats are going to be using every political opportunity to be spiteful, vengeful, and this might sound a little hyperbolic, but I can't really think of phrasing it any different way. I've been reading The Prince by Machiavelli, and there's two different paths for the prince to take once they're taking over a new princedom. One is to ingratiate yourself to the locals and win them over by maintaining the status quo or kill off the entire lineage of your pre previous regime. And we're seeing the latter taking place. So at the end of the day, this impeachment won't go anywhere, but it will document and bring to the forefront everything that Joe Biden has done. We know the stuff in contact or in context with 
his son's laptop dealings with China, 10% for the big guy, remember? Ukraine, all of his stuff with General Flynn as well, invoking the Logan Act. And that's just the big stuff that we know about right now. But has he done anything impeachable as president-elect while standing in front of the banner of the office of the president-elect? That's questionable. But if they're going to pursue, and this is the Democrats right now, pursue the impeachment and the conviction in the Senate after president trump has left office then i think everything's on the table regarding everything that's happened in the past and what could happen in the future deadly precedent but if it's going to be set you have to use the tactics of both sides if these are the new rules for engagement fucking use them there's no honor amongst thieves i, I hate it but that's how it has to be one side can't just fight with va or valor and honor and think that oh we own the the moral high ground and then as soon as one person fucks up you just no 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 i uh, just, just plaster up the cracks it's all good it's all good we can we can rebuild it's it's fine we still have the moral high ground don't care I don't care. Everything that we're finding out coming out of the Capitol Hill, tussle, call it a right. I don't give a fuck. But everything there is getting a little fucking sketchy and it's just kind of been a big excuse to paint it as the next 9-11 in order to censor and remove political opponents. So, I, like I said, I'm torn on this one. I don't want to see the United States Constitution weaponized, but then at the same time, the rules for engagement have changed. So, let's dive into this whatever's there because it was just a little statement that you put out last night so eh. freshman congresswoman marjorie taylor green said she would attempt to impeach president-elect joe biden for abuse of power once she is sworn into office or once he is sworn into office she's already been sworn into office the georgia republican who has raised eyebrows for boosting conspiracy theories yes not p anon and not r anon there's a letter in the middle hmm one of those announced the long shot move Wednesday evening on Newsmax, just hours after the vote or the House vote to impeach President Trump for inciting an insurrection. Yes, it's a very, very long shot because there were 10 stupid Republicans who crossed the aisle to join the Democrats who would never accept you anyways, but you just voted because you think that, hey, eat me last. So mm. this is literally just as stupid because it would go exactly the same way, if not worse, but mm -hmm. Let's see. I'd like to announce on behalf of the American people, we will have to make sure that our leaders are held accountable, Green said. She claimed Biden is willing to use his power of office and presidency to and will be easily bought off by foreign governments. I agree. Chinese energy companies and Ukrainian energy companies. Oh, they'll just pay him in uh, General Chow's chicken and pierogies. But I understand your legitimate fears on this one, Marjorie. Madge, if we can be a little less formal. Green said she would be filing articles of impeachment on January 21st, Biden's full or first full day in office. Why would you try to remove him 99 days before he's just gonna meander off into the sunset? I'm just kidding. I hopefully he sticks around for all four years. And I mean that because I want to see how many times he's gonna fuck up in speeches or how edited together his YouTube videos are gonna be because that's gonna be funny too. You're just going to see head movement like this all the time. Or they'll just have like a soundboard and it'll be, it'll all just look stupidly like deep fakes for all of his goddamn speeches. And they'll be like two minutes long. Oh, I need to keep them short so the kids will pay attention. If there's nothing more than Joe Biden likes to please than uh, the younger, fresh scalped individuals. Green said she would be filing articles of impeachment on January 21st. Yes, in a subsequent tweet, she announced the move and included hashtags such as Biden crime family and quid pro Joe. God, what is this, late October? Got it. On Wednesday, Axios reported that there's a rift forming between new GOP members of Congress and that Green reportedly got into a heated debate with fellow Republican Nancy Mace, fuck you, of South Carolina in a group text with freshman con uh, GOP representatives. Nancy Mace can fuck off. After Green posted an article on about Trump's acu uh, approval rating, Mace reportedly fired back that she was distur disgusted by what you and other quicken? Quality? Quintessential? I don't know what that Q stands for. Conspiracy theories last week in the chamber after all of the violence. Why, what did they do? Is she still scared? Does Nancy close her eyes at night and then all she sees is just some horns and a guy with a fucking painted face us through her window and her she sleeps or slips off of her plastic sheets because she's just so terrified? Oh no, wait a minute. Those are the other bull fantasies that she has. Anyways, House voted... 232 to 197 on Wednesday to impeach Trump for the second time with 10 Republicans, yes, including, and I made this mis 
mistake yesterday. I said that Liz Cheney was Dick Cheney's wife because she looks terrible for being somebody who is actually Dick Cheney's daughter. But I guess that's kind of consistent across all of these old rhinos offspring. They're the size of a house and have the texture of that very same house just stuccoed. They aren't attractive people. Like, there's some hot maggot chicks out there, don't get me wrong, but there aren't very many hot rhinos, which is apropos when we're talking about Liz Cheney and Meghan McCain in size and stature. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said that after the impeachment, a trial will not be held until after Biden is sworn into office, and that's what I'm worried about. If the Senate is going to hear and finish the impeachment trials after Trump is out of office, that is a dangerous precedent. I would wait to put these articles of impeachment ahead. I don't know if she will be allowed to put them out there because A, the Republicans aren't the majority and this is going to really amount to nothing. Honestly, it's fun. It's a LARP. It'll make the news, but it'll just kind of make her look a little silly. And what you don't need is a a red version of AOC, which is kind of funny in and of itself. It just needs to refute them with facts and logic like Nikki Haley would want hilarious she's going to create a pack which is definitely going to get all of that uh, coke brothers money and big banking money i look forward to following that pack that's laser focused on the 2022 midterms i don't like to tell you guys who to follow or who to listen to but if you hear any conservative talkers talking about how nikki haley is the future of the party and uh anything that she endorses I would be concerned about the motives of those people that you'd be listening to trumpeting Nikki Haley as any sort of future leadership because she is as greasy as the people that we've been talking about through the, through this entire video. I think John McCain might have a uh, similar worded statement for her in the future. God rest his traitorous soul. But we got more fun stuff to talk about in the next video. I'm not too sure where we're going to go because we got a bunch of different branching paths ahead of us and it's all fun. And by fun, I mean terrifying, but we'll try to make it fun. I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.